Hi guys, welcome to Amateur Chemistry. So, all of you probably know that every fire has a yellow or a blue color, right? Well, no. There actually can be tons of different flame colors that depend on what's burning. I already made a separate video about that exploring the reason why these colored fires exist and in that video I showed a green flame color as an example. This color was produced by introducing boron atoms to a flame and in that video I showed a very basic example of that but now after almost half a year I have gained enough experience and equipment to make an upgraded version of that fire. But before I do that let me quickly show you how to make the basic version because it is really simple. All you need to get is some kind of a boron containing compound like borax or boric acid and a flammable solvent like ethanol or methanol. If you mix these ingredients and ignite them, you have your green flame, it is really that easy. Although this demonstration is easy to make and fine for most purposes, if you want some real green fires, you need to use some extra chemistry. The main problem with these basic flames is that their fuel is not a uniform mixture and the borax one also has some yellow color in it due to the sodium content of borax. The boric acid methanol one is much better because its flame is clearer. It works like that because there is a chemical reaction going on between the boric acid and methanol producing a chemical of a beautiful green flame. However, this reaction is very slow and happens based on equilibrium, so the effect is not the best. The chemical that this reaction produces is called trimethyl borate and it is a clear liquid capable of burning by itself. Its molecule has a boron atom in the center which makes it perfect for making green fires. That is also the compound that I will be synthesizing today and now let's move on to collecting the needed ingredients. Firstly, I am going to of course need a source of boron and this can be boric acid or borax. Both of them work well for this reaction and I used boric acid because I had it on hand. The second ingredient is some methanol. I have to use a pretty big amount because some of it will evaporate and a large portion will not get converted into the trimethyl borate. The last ingredient is a dehydration agent. I use some 96% sulfuric acid but other dehydrating agents such as phosphorus pentoxide could also be used. Before I do this experiment, I have to warn you that if you were to recreate it, you would have to work in a fume hood outside to avoid toxic methanol vapors. With that out of the way, I now need to measure out the ingredients. I measured out 200 ml of methanol into portions and added it into a large boiling flask. The next ingredient was 30 ml of 96% sulfuric acid and the addition of that has to be done very slowly because upon contact with the methanol it runs up and can cause some of it to boil leaving you with a lovely cloud of toxic vapors. After the addition of sulfuric acid I poured in 62 grams of boric acid into the flask. After all of the boric acid has been added, I placed the flask in a heating mantle, put a condenser on top of it and started heating the mixture. What I am doing here is just refluxing the mixture because the reaction takes some time to complete and requires elevated temperatures at which the methanol boils, so it needs to be condensed to avoid loss. Some of it escapes nonetheless, and that is why I added more. So now that this is refluxing, let's talk about what is going on in there. The reaction of making trimethyl borate is really simple, and it basically involves taking the water out of the methanol and boric acid by the dehydration agent. This joins the molecules together and produces the desired trimethyl borate. If I would have used borax instead of the boric acid, the process would be similar producing some sodium hydroxide as a byproduct. After about 40 minutes of refluxing, I took the mixture of the heat, allowed it to cool and started to assemble a simple distillation apparatus in the place of the reflux. After that was done, I turned on the heating and allowed the mixture to slowly distill. It distilled over pretty quickly 
and after a few minutes, I had a pretty nice amount of the distillate. In the boiling flask, some kind of white crust started to form, and it probably was just some unreacted boric acid, and by just looking at it, I knew that it would be a pain to clean. After some time, the distillation apparatus got covered with a white layer, which was a product of the reaction of trimethylborate with residual water on the walls of the apparatus. I actually wanted to dry it before the distillation, but of course, I forgot to do that. After the distillation had finished, I turned off the heat and collected the distillate. I couldn't measure the exact amount of the trimethyl borate that I made, because it forms an azeotrope with the methanol, and it is also one of the reasons that I had to add more of it. I can confirm that there is quite a bit of the trimethyl borate in my distillate, because after I combine it with some water, it turns white, reversing the reaction and forming some boric acid, as it did on my distillation apparatus. So now that I have the tray of borate, it is finally time to test it. When I ignited a small amount of my product, it burned to a beautiful and clear green flame, which was really nice because it confirmed that I am better at chemistry than I was a few months ago. Yippee! After all of that, you would probably think that I have some kind of a chemical use for my product, but no. As a chemist, I did this whole reaction just to play with the product. That's why I love chemistry. Anyway, I wanted to repeat a failed experiment from the first video in which I wanted to make a green fireball using a sprayer and a candle. It didn't work because my setup wasn't the greatest, but now I upgraded it. Instead of a candle, I have a blowtorch and a different sprayer that works, filled with trimethyl borate. At first, it just dyed the flame green, but after learning how to aim this thing, I managed to produce a green fireball. It looked really nice, but also generated lots of methanol vapors, which I really didn't want to breathe, so I had to do this in my film hood. For another experiment, I got a chunky piece of metal to avoid setting my film hood on fire and pour some of the trimethyl borate on it. After igniting it, the fire quickly spread, but in slow motion, I captured a nice shot of the fire expanding. As a final experiment, I decided to pay tribute to Styropyro, who is one of my favorite chemist YouTubers. He always makes this green fire on the floor, which I always found quite interesting, and now I finally was able to replicate it. To do that, I cleaned a part of my floor of any flammable debris, put on a gas mask, and proceeded to pour most of my triumphal borate onto the floor. Then, before it all evaporated, I quickly ignited it, and the result was beautiful. I now have a puddle of green fire, and to be honest, it is quite fascinating to look at. It is also a nice material for the thumbnail. After playing with the train of borate, it was time to see what I have left, because in the air, it quickly hydrolyzes back to boric acid and methanol, and to prevent that, I poured it all into a tightly sealed vial for long-term storage. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching, if you enjoyed the video you can like and subscribe to my channel, and see you in the next one.